Hello and welcome back to our next math lesson. And today, something completely new. We are going to multiply fractions by an integer. First thing to remember, an integer just means a whole number, just in case. So let's have a look. Match the multiplication to the addition. Have a go. See if you can match them. Pause now. Okay, so five times two means two fives or five twos. One, two, three, four, five, five twos. No sixes means either six no zeros or no sixes. So that's here. Nine threes either means three nines or nine threes. And four times one fifth means four one fifths or one fifth of four. That's harder to do, so let's do four one fifths which is this one here. And actually, this shows us exactly what we're doing. One fifth plus one fifth, one plus one fifth plus one fifth equals four fifths. Interesting. Hmm. Where's the rule? Not as hard as you think. Let's have a look. So Alex has four pieces of wood. Each piece of wood is one, point, uh, one seventh of a meter long. How long is all of Alex's wood? Have a think, see what you think. Well, here's his four pieces of wood, each one being a seven, one seventh of a meter long. We add them all together, one seventh plus one seventh is two sevenths, plus another seventh is three sevenths, plus another seventh is four sevenths. Remember when we're adding, we just add the numerator together, leaving the denominator as is. Four sevenths. Interesting, isn't it? Because actually, that question, four one sevenths, could also be written as four times one seventh, or lots of one seventh, which is still four sevenths. So, what have we actually done? Four times one is four, and we've left the seven. So, three three quarters is the same as one quarter times what, which is what? Have a think, see what you think. Okay, so how many quarters have I got? Three. Yep, so I'm timesing it by three. Hmm. I don't change the bottom, I just multiply out the top. So one times three is three. Nice and easy, eh? Let's have a look again. So one third plus one third is two times one third. So I've got two of them. Two times one is two. So it's two thirds. We don't do anything with the denominator. We just times the integer by thing. What, you're, what is odd is if when you times by a fraction, it actually gets smaller. But you have to think about it the other way around. The fraction is getting bigger. Yeah, and that's the odd thing about this. It's because a fraction is only part of a whole. When you think about when you're timesing by one, you get the same number. So two times one equals two, the, get the number itself. Whereas when we're dividing by something, which, and then think about it the other way, in timesing by zero, the answer is zero. So anything that we have between one and zero, which are all of our proper fractions, this is between one and zero, must give us a number in here somewhere, which this does. Okay? This kind of why it works, but it's, it's a nice thing to understand. So here you go, have a look at this one, see if you can work it out. One tenth times five. One tenth times five, so that's one two, three, four, five tenths. So the answer is five tenths, which is the same as a half. Okay, have a look at these, even if they're a bit blurry, see what you can have a look at. Have a go. Okay, your answers, here you go. So you can use a bar model to help you, I don't mind if you don't. Three thirds added together is three, Three fifths added together is three fifths. Three times one fifth is three fifths. 
four one seventh added together is four sevenths. Four times one seventh is four sevenths. Five one eighths added together are five eighths. Five times one eighth is five eighths because one, two, three, four, five is five. Seven tenths, seven tenths, and seven times one tenth is seven tenths. Just showing off that they're the same thing, basically. If there was a two in here, it would affect the addition, but it doesn't. We're not doing that. And then complete the multiplication. So three times one eighth, so it just times the whole number, the integer by the denominator. So three times one is three, still eights. Still tenths, three times one is three. One times five is five. The denominator stays the same. Denominator stays the same. Nine times one is nine. One times four is four. The denominator stays the same. One times eight is eight. The denominator stays the same. Eight times one is eight. The denominator stays the same. Uh, one times 10 is 10. The denominator stays the same. Then we match these two thirds the same as two thirds. Three fifths is the same as three times one fifth. Two fifths is the same as two times one fifth. And three quarters is the same as one quarter times by three. Well done. And the last one, just a cuts into cut, pizza is cut into six. He eats five slices, right to the multiplication that represents this, which is five times one sixth, which is five sixths of a pizza. He almost ate an entire pizza, the pig. So five times one third equals, have a think, what do you think? This is another way to show it. If we think about this, we've got five times one third, so it's one, two, three, four, five, five thirds, which is there. Then we can change that into a, an improper fraction if we want to, which is one and two thirds, but we can do that anyway. Or we can do one times, five times one, which is five thirds. Which is the same as one and third. Oh, I'm giving you the answer. Try that one, see how you do. Okay, so surprisingly enough, the answer to the first one uh, is eight times one, which is eight. And then we just get rid of the improper fraction. So how many eights fit into, how many twos fit into eight, which is four, with no left over, so it's four. Then one times 14 is 14, 14, six. Then we see how many six fit, sixes fit into 14 with, that's two with two left over. Um, and two sixths is the same as one third. Uh, so one times something equals two whole ones. Well, two whole ones is the same as two times nine is 18. So it's 18 ninths. So we've got to times it by 18. Uh, but it's gonna talk you through that one here. Look, there we go. Okay, have a look at these ones, see what you can do, pause now. Okay, so we've got one eighth times something equals one and three eighths. Well, what we need to do is work out what this is as a proper fraction. So one is the same as eight eighths. Um, so one is eight eighths. We add those three eighths onto it. Uh, so that's 11 eighths. So one times 11. Um, then we've got something times one sixth equals one and two thirds. Well, first off, let's put it in terms of six, otherwise it's going to be very confusing. So that's one and four sixths. Then we need to get rid of this one. So that's the same as one whole one is six sixths. One, uh, six plus four is 10. So this must be 10. Let's see if we're right. There we go. Okay. Have a go, see what you can do. Okay, let's have a look. So first off, it shows us um, one times, six times one is six fifths. Six fifths is the same as one and five fifths, that uh, one fifth. Nine times one fifth is nine and nine fifths, which is the same as one and four fifths. Over on this side, 11, times one is 11, so it's 11 tenths, which is the same as one and one tenth. 11 times one is 11 ninths, because we keep the noise the same. That's the same as one and two ninths. One eighth times 11, so it's one times 11 is 11, it's eighths. That's the same as one and three eighths. 11 times one is 11 
over seven because the denominator uh, is still the same. That's the same as one and four sevenths. And then 11 times one is 11 over six because the denominator is the same. 11 six is the same as one and five six. This pattern could continue if we kept going down in the fraction. Look, the, the integer stays the same, the fraction stays the same. The only problem is that when we go down to the next one, actually, we're going to have over a whole because 11 fifths would be two and one fifth. So you just have to think about that a little bit more. And then complete the calculations here. Two, so we've got two thirds. We're times in something by one third. We need to see what two times, one times what equals two, one times two. One, so this one is the same thing as saying three thirds. So one times three equals three. This one is the same as saying seven sevenths. So one times seven is seven. Um, this we have to adjust. So one is seven plus that three, that's 10 sevenths. So one times 10 is 10. Uh, multiply this out, that gets us to 11 eighths. So it's 11 times, it's one eighth. Uh, this is the same as saying seven halves because three times two is six plus one is seven. So we need seven. Uh, three times three is nine plus one is ten. So ten and one six, uh, ten times ten. And this one here, three times four is twelve plus one is thirteen. So we need to times it by thirteen. And that is it, guys. Um, I told you it's not as hard as it is. When we go on from this, um, remember this, and I'll show you a little trick that will make it make all the sense. But this, not too hard, is it? Just remember, you times the, the numerator by the integer, leave the denominator as it is. Good luck. I will see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.